Hey everybody. Today we're introducing the chi-square distribution. Suppose we have a collection of independent random variables, each with a normal distribution. We'd somehow like to measure how far those variables are from their expected values, sort of overall. The variable chi-squared is going to let us do this. It's defined like this. For each of those independent random variables, compute a z-score, square it, and then add up all those values. When all of the individual z-scores are zero, all the individual results are right at their mean, and chi-squared is going to be exactly zero. As those individual results get further from their mean, chi-squared gets larger. Notice that when we square these results, we make everything positive, so we're going to avoid canceling out low values and high values. In a sense, chi-squared is going to measure the total variability in these random variables. The sampling distribution of this random variable chi-squared is called the chi-squared distribution with r, with r degrees of freedom, or chi-squared of r for short. Notice that we're using the words chi-squared here to refer both to that random variable defined up above and the distribution of that random variable. Usually the context will make it clear which one we're talking about. Since each of the z's are continuous random variables, so is chi-squared, and we can make a couple of immediate observations. Chi-squared is going to have a PDF that's going to be zero for chi-squared less than or equal to zero, because of course chi-squared can never be negative. And the distribution of chi-squared is going to be skewed to the right regard regardless of r. Here's the graph of chi-squared of five. It's fairly typical for the chi-squared distribution when, chi when r is fairly small but not equal to zero or one. A couple of quick facts. First of all, the expected value of chi-squared of r is always r. Second of all, the mode or peak of a chi-squared distribution is r minus two, if r is at least two, and zero otherwise. When r is large, the distribution of chi-squared of r is approximately normal. That is, the graph is going to have a bell shape. Here I've drawn a graph of chi-squared of 50. You can already see that bell shape to one degree or another. But if you look close, you can still see that right skew. The chi-squared distribution comes up all the time in inferential statistics. Here's a few of the most common places that we'll encounter it. First of all, significance testing for variance. When drawing samples of size n from a normal distribution with some hypothesized variance, sigma squared, the sampling distribution of n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared is going to be chi squared of n minus 1, where s squared is the sample variance. So the idea there is that we're comparing sample variance to population variance under a new, under a null hypothesis. Second uh, common application is goodness of fit testing. When you have a categorical variable with a hypothesized distribution, the sampling distribution of the sum of O minus E squared over E is approximately chi squared with N minus one degrees of freedom, where N is the number of categories. O is the observed count in each category, and E is the expected count under the hypothesized distribution. Finally, there's a chi-squared test for independence that works in a fairly similar way to the goodness of fit test there in the second bullet point. Um, this is used for testing whether two categorical variables are independent of one another or dependent um, upon one another. As with any continuous random variable, we compute probabilities in a chi-squared distribution using a CDF, a cumulative distribution function. For any given value of x, the CDF capital F of X gives the probability of randomly getting a value less than or equal to X in the appropriate chi-squared distribution. Here's the technical definition. Capital F of X is equal to the probability of randomly getting a value for big, F, for big X less than or equal to the specified value of little x in that chi-squared distribution. I think this is most clear from a picture. So here's that same drawing of chi squared of five that we saw before. I've labeled the value x equals eight and shaded the region to the left. The area of that shaded region is going to be the CDF of chi squared of five 
um, for x equals 8, or to say it differently, f of 8. We interpret the probability that x is less than or equal to 8 as the area of that region. In R, the CDF of chi squared of R is represented by the command p chi squared x comma r, that is p c h i s q x comma r. Here x is the value of interest and r is the number of degrees of freedom. For instance, we can compute f of 8 in chi squared of 5 using the command p chi squared 8 comma 5. The result of that is 0 0.8437644. So to say this in words, 80, about 84% of the area under that graph is shaded there in light gray. The probability of randomly getting a value from this distribution less than or equal to 8 is about 84%.